This is the story of Hong Zingxing. She is a 24-year-old former special forces. She is not a normal girl. She is stronger, also does 100 push-ups every morning. Zing does a lot of exercise. She is caring and from time to time stands up for others. Currently, she is a self-defense instructor for children and as a detail not least, she is still single. She has a father who is very proud of her, but he has a disability, but we will dig into that later. Zing likes to compete against her father. On the other hand, we meet Wai Lan, who is going to be the new director of a company called Runchi Group. He is incredibly fast and good at his job, and he wants his assistant to be too, so he asks her to do a document in just 10 minutes. The company is busier than usual when Wai visits them. Wai is 1.84 meters tall, has the face of an idol, has studied biopharmaceuticals and management abroad and will receive the position as a director of the company after his father proposed it and the board members voted for it. Why asks this guy why he let one of the projects leak soon after he ended up firing him. Later on, he talks to the secretary and she tells him that he must take good care of his health or else will get sick. Why says there is no way he will end up in the hospital, only moments later to take a wrong step and hurt his ankle, so ironically, he did end up in the hospital. This guy, whose name is Zhu Yilin immediately went to see Wai with concern. He describes himself as brother of Wai's and newly appointed as project manager of Runchi Group's R&D department. Anyway, the doctor tells Wai that he just has a sprain and it will not be a problem, but as a personal doctor, he needs to know Wai's usual routine. Wai says he has a good sleep schedule and assumes he eats his meals on time. He only orders light takeaway food, drinks only five cups of coffee every day and that for him is healthy. The doctor scolds him and tells him he must take better care of himself or he will get sick. Ju smiles and says he is there to look after Wai, but moments later, he inadvertently hurts his leg. Ju gives Wai the keys to his car as he borrowed it after getting off the plane. Later, Wai leaves the hospital hand in hand with Ju and the secretary. But the secretary goes back to get some medicine. Wai reproaches Ju for finally deigning to return. He replies that as soon as he got off the plane, he found out what had happened to Wai and was worried about him. As Wai is alone, has no girlfriend and has no one to take care of him, so Ju wants to look after him. Zhu goes off for a moment to buy some juice for Wai. Moments later, Wai realizes that there is someone trying to open his car, so he rushes over and confronts him. The criminal manages to take some things from Wai's car, but Wai restrains him and is about to beat him up. But before that happens, Zing appears and stops him. As she misunderstood the situation, this gives the criminal a chance to escape. Wai is on the ground in pain and Zing approaches him. He thinks she will help him but she won't. Zing is still confused and thinks the offender is him, so she hits him a bit. Wai tells her that the bags are his as well as the car, so he shows her his papers. Zing immediately apologizes, and now that she knows that the guy stole Wai's stuff, she will catch him. By the time the secretary returns, Wai is gone, so she goes and wakes up this guy who was supposed to be guarding Wai. Meanwhile, the chase is on, Zing stops the criminal from escaping and starts to fight him, but the criminal is no match for her and she ends up catching him. Zing helps him up, but she can't waste any more time as she is about to be late for work, so she writes down her phone number on a piece of paper and leaves it with Wai and then leaves. She hopes nothing bad happens to him, while Wai was just angry and said he never want to see that woman again. Wai throws the paper on the floor but the secretary picks it up. From there we go to Zing's work, where there is a child crying and the boss was apologizing to him and the parents. Zing arrives, but hides while she sees what is going on. She tries to hide from Mr. Lei, but it is no use. He immediately summons her to tell her that he no longer needs Zing to be an instructor. Zing doesn't understand what she did wrong, but she is willing to change. That's when Lei reminds Zing of all the jobs she has had and how she has lost them. All for the same thing. Zing says that she only taught the children to defend themselves. She didn't do anything else. That's when Lei tells her what happened with the boy we saw crying before, and that is that a girl trained by Zing, while playing with the boy, used self-defense techniques for women which Zing taught her. So the boy ended up with a sprained arm. Basically, Zing's problem is that she does her job too well, which in a way hurts Lei, so he fires her and gives her pay. She tries to convince him not to fire her. As she has to take care of her father, who is missing an arm, Lei apologizes to her because he knows Zing's situation, but asks her to understand his situation as well. Back with Wai, he is in the hospital again, this time for his sprained ankle. It has only been two hours since the last time he was there. The doctor tells Wai that his foot will be fine in a few weeks, but as for Wai, he will have to stay in the hospital for two days to be observed. Wai tries to convince the doctor doctor not to let him stay there for two days, but he is responsible for his health, so he will stay in the hospital. Wai blames Zing for his bad luck, because if it wasn't for her, he wouldn't have broken his foot. The secretary tells Wai that that wasn't all, because the criminal Zing caught ended up with two broken ribs. From there we go to these guys, who have a recording of the moment where Zing pinned Wai down, so this guy asks for the video to be uploaded on the internet to let everyone know about it and embarrass Wai. Later on, he already knows that the video had been uploaded and wonders if anyone has seen it, and well, yes, a few, many, actually. 
Ju proposes a solution to the problem, to pass off the video as a carefully arranged performance or a kind of rehearsal, so Y asks for Zing to be brought in immediately. As for her, she returns home to her father, who she tells that she should not force herself to cook, he insists on going on, as he can manage with only one arm, but what happened to make him lose one of his arms? For that we go to a flashback, when Zing still belonged to the special forces, she was taking orders from her father and at the same time, she was in charge of leading the whole platoon, Mr. Hung warns Zing that the bamboo forest is dangerous. This mission takes place on October 30th. The objective is to rescue five employees of a biopharmaceutical company who were kidnapped in that force. Once the hostages are rescued, they must escape immediately. The mission progresses. Zing used a drone to see from above. At that time, Mr. Hong gave full command to Zing. Zing gives the orders to everyone, so they begin to go deeper into the forest until they reach the camp where the hostages are. There they begin to finish with the enemies one by one in a rain of bullets quite dangerous. Once they finished with all the enemies on the outside, they went to finish with those who were inside. The mission was a complete success, except that when they were all together, a person detonated an explosive near Zing and Hong. He, trying to protect her from the explosion, ended up losing an arm and that is why Zing wants to get a job to buy a robotic arm for her father. She does some research and manages to get one for $120,000, but she is nowhere near that amount, so she has to hurry and get a new job. She blames Y for what happened, because if she had not met him, Mr. Lei would not have fired her, and moments later, she gets a call from Y's secretary, telling her that he wanted to see her. Zhu tries to take care of Y, who, in turn, wants to talk to Y about the marriage candidates proposed by Y's father that Y ended up rejecting or well, more or less, she ended up leaving upset. But anyway, Chu says that Y must have the perfect bride, tall, slim, long hair, so he starts drawing. But before he does, Y interrupts him to tell him what his ideal woman would be like. Short hair above the ears, girl who hates any kind of female clothes, no IQ requirements, but she must be physically competent, she must have a forceful and rough character, yes, he almost described Zing. As for hobbies, Y wants his ideal wife to know boxing, Parker in combat sports. He doesn't want someone docile, he wants an assertive person. While he says all this, Zing is on her way doing her sort of things. Moments later, Ju finishes the drawing. Y tells him that if his father gets him a woman as he described her, then he will marry her, at which point Ju shows him the drawing he made, which was actually a gorilla. Later, Zing arrives to see Y. The secretary is excited to see her and lets her in. Upon entering the room, Zing finds Y passed out from lack of blood sugar moments later. Y wakes up and the doctor tells him that his body is at its limit. After the doctor leaves, Zing comes forward. She starts by apologizing to Y for what happened, but mentions that now that she helped him, they are even. Y asks her if she only helped him to avoid responsibility. She says she didn't, she really just wanted to catch the thief. Besides, she ended up losing her job because of this. Y tells her that he doesn't need any compensation or money, to which Zing is happy, but Y asks her for help with something. He then shows her the video and explains that if anyone asks her about the video, she should reply that she is Y's outside martial arts instructor and that she was showing him how to subdue someone. Zing refuses to lie, so Y brings up the idea of charging her money as compensation. So Zing has no choice but to agree to be the instructor, but first, she has to teach Y a few things. Y agrees to learn, but in return, Zing will have to accept all the conditions. Moments later, she starts to show him a way to immobilize someone. When Y tries to do it, it goes very well and he catches Zing, asking him if they now have a deal. But moments later, the secretary enters the room and misunderstands the situation. Y tells her that nothing has happened and asks her what is going on. The secretary asks Y if the driver's salary was 360,000 yuan per year. Hearing this, Zing is immediately excited, as she now sees a new opportunity, so she approaches Y to ask if he really pays his driver that much money per year. She wants to be hired by Y, but he rejects her as a driver, as a secretary and finally, he rejects her as a martial arts instructor. All Y is asking her to do is to keep the secret of the video and so he will not charge her for compensation for the damages caused. Either she accepts the conditions that Y is setting, or she will have to pay, there is no other way. Moments later, Y asks Zing to leave, but notices something, and that is that there is his change of clothes. He asks Zing who changed his clothes, to which she replies that she helped the doctor do it. Y gets nervous as that would mean that she saw his muscles, but Zing replies that he needs to have muscles so that they are visible first, subsequently, she leaves. The next morning, Zing sets out to get a job, while wondering if she is really good at it. She notices someone in disguise following her. This person tries to disguise it by dancing every time Zing turns around, but she is already aware of it, so she will start moving. Moments later, Zing manages to confuse the person and catch him. She gives him two options, either report him to the police or turn himself in, but before Zing hits him again, she recognizes the voice behind the disguise. It is this guy, called Ling Ting. They both know each other, they haven't seen each other for a long time. 
Later, the two meet and Zing tells him that following an ex-Special Forces man is not the best idea. Ting says he came back to the country to be with Zing. But in reality he came back because he took a year off to find his goal in life. Moments later, Ting starts looking for a job for Zing, because even though she hasn't told him, it is quite obvious that she is unemployed. After that, she gets a job offer from Runchi Group, with an annual payment of 400,000 yuan. The president is looking for a person who knows how to drive. Zing knows how to drive, proficient in English. She also knows how to speak English. And last but not least, self-defense. Zing knows it all too well. This offer is practically made for her. If she gets all that money, she can buy the robotic arm for her dad. Ting asks Zing if she is still single, as no girl with a boyfriend would wander the streets alone as she did, then we see that Zing's CV was received. Y is still unaware of this, because he is still in the hospital. Moments later, he receives a visit from his father. He tells him that he has found a full assistant and is able to help him in everything but Y replies that he doesn't need him, then asks his father why he came back, and reminds him of the bet they have made. His father says he will leave after making sure Y is okay, they continue talking. Y thinks this assistant his father is talking about is someone who will spy on him. Y doesn't change his answer, he says he doesn't need anyone. His father tells him it is silly for him to think that way, as everyone needs help sometime. Y tells his father that he will not let him control him again, and tells him to go back to Europe. This makes the old man angry and he leaves. Later, when he is at home, Y gets a call, as something had happened to his father. Y goes immediately to see him in the hospital, because in the afternoon, he went to the laboratory to check the progress, but he smelled a strange odor, and when he was about to examine it, exploded in his face. Fortunately he is not in critical condition, but he will have to be hospitalized for a while. Before the accident, his father proposed to find an assistant for Y. So there are all the resumes. Mr. Kang tells Y that he should choose one, but Y maintains his position. He wants to be alone. He won't choose anyone. Kang tries to make Y see reason and tells him that his father doesn't want to harm him. On the contrary, he wants to protect him. Y tells Kang to do whatever he wants, and then leaves. After that, Y's father gets up to talk to Kang and asks him if he has tampered with the security video footage, to which he replies yes. Kang asks him not to worry, even though he is faking everything. He knows about his health condition and understands that he can't take care of Y all the time. Therefore, with everyone believing that he is in serious health condition, bad people will want to harm the company. As for Zing, she is at home with her father, who tells her that she should stay away from Ting, as he knows his intentions. Then Mr. Hong wants to find a better partner for Zing, so he contacts his old friends. Then Zing receives a message that she has been accepted into the Runchi group. So the next day she goes there, everyone is watching her as she walks through the corridors. Until she meets these three, Zing introduces herself and says she is the president's new assistant. The girl in the middle is called Zhao. She tells Zing that the president has not arrived. She also mentions that her hair is still wet, so she takes her to a bathroom where she can dry it. Everything could have gone well, except that in that same room, Y was taking a bath. So when Y comes out of the bath, they meet. Both are confused, as she didn't know Y worked here. Zing tells Y that she works there now. She just doesn't know that she will have to work for him yet. But he doesn't know yet either. So they start arguing and he tells her that he pities the person she has to work for. Zing gets annoyed with him and throws him into the pool and then leaves. Only to realize moments later that she has to work for him. Yes, a rather awkward situation. Zing was confused as she had checked well and the chairman of Runchi Group was someone called Y Feng. But Y tells her that that is his father and left the chairmanship to him the day before. Y wants to take revenge on her, and as he thinks she is not yet hired, he asks her for her CV to tear it up and ask her to leave. He cannot tear it apart, but Zing tells him that she confirmed the decision to work here. Plus, she already received the call from HR and signed the electronic copy of the contract, so she is officially an employee of Runchi and cannot be fired without a valid reason. Y calls HR to ask why they hired Zing without telling him, to which they reply that it was his father's decision, Y is free to fire Zing if he wants to. But if he does, he will lose the chairmanship, they are both in the same boat now, so they will have to work together even if he doesn't want to. Y tells Zing that his assistant must be good at office work and martial arts, so Zing shows him all her diplomas and degrees. She not only knows how to fight, but she also knows how to be a leader and eloquent. But Y insists that he won't let her work there. She tries to negotiate with him but Y refuses. So Zing uses a foolproof card, the video of her beating him. This leaves Y no choice but to accept her on the job. From there we go to Zhu, who receives a call from Y to come to see him immediately. Y tells him everything. That the newly hired woman is the one who hit him in that video. Y suspects that Zing is up to something and that it is his father's plan. Reading Zing's CV, Zhu is surprised by all her qualities. So he tells Y that it would be a shame to fire her. Zing has a strong sense of justice, so Zhu tells Y that it is better not to fire her. 
Later on, Zing is accepted by Y as the new personal assistant. He makes her sign a different contract. At that time, Zing will have an annual income of 400,000 yuan and her immediate family will have 100,000 yuan per year. At that time, Zing asks him if she can receive medical devices. Y does not understand well. Then Zing tells him that her goal is to buy a prosthesis for her father. Y tells her that if she does well, he will consider adding the prosthesis in one year. So Zing happily signs her contract. Zing is taken to the office by Secretary Sun. She tells her some things that Zing must know to take care of Y. As for the office, it is a mess, but this is not a problem for her. There we see that this was part of Zhu and Y's plan. He told him that he must be hard on Zing to weaken her willpower, and at that moment, Y must intervene to be her savior. But his plan is frustrated when Secretary Sun informs Y that Zing is very motivated with her new office. So Y goes to visit her and notices that the office is completely tidy and clean. Then she comes back and asks him what he is doing in there. He replies that he is just there making sure everything is going well for her. But by the time Y tries to leave, the door won't open, Zing offers to help him. But Y wants to do it himself. It is clear that the door was stuck. Y was not being able to open it at all while Zing was laughing at him. So Y tells him that it is her turn to try. Outside, these three already know that Y is stuck there. So they call the locksmith to help, but it will take a while for him to arrive. Y starts to feel bad and Zing notices it, so she wants to help him, but he refuses. Zing starts to read the notes to take care of Y and it says that when he stays in a trapped place he starts to feel bad. It is at that moment where Zing decides to break the door to get out. Y offers to help her, so they do it at the same time. Seconds later, they manage to open the door, or well, break it. We return to the guys we saw earlier. They are already aware of Zing's identity and that she is now working for Y. This guy, called Ga, claims to have many tricks up his sleeve to harm Y, so he doesn't care if he is now accompanied by Zing, so he asks his henchmen to look for Y's weak point. As for Y, he is eating and Zing sits next to him but in a somewhat disrespectful manner. So she gets up. Afterwards, she hands him a work proposal she has made because she noticed that the staff members are low in spirit. Y tells her that the report is fine, but it is not necessary. Moments later, he notices that Zing is injured, so he offers to help her but she refuses. After saying that she brings bad luck, Y calls Secretary Sun to give Zing some medicine. Later, Zing is reunited with Ting, who obviously has feelings for her but Zing only sees him as a younger brother. Later, the secretary's son takes Zing to her new desk, as now she is not just a normal assistant, she is now Y's personal assistant. A title he personally gave her, Zing is a bit embarrassed. But thanks Y for the medicine, Y tells her to enjoy her new desk and now he treats her very well. He makes it clear to her that she is now his personal assistant, so she will get special treatment. It would be great to think that maybe this is coming from the bottom of Y's heart, but it is not. This is also part of his plan with you. He told him that he must be nice to Zing so that she feels sympathy and affection and then tame her little by little to repair the relationship between the two of them. Zing writes to Ting to tell him that her boss is acting strange. She finds it hard to read his mood. Yesterday he was mean to her, but today he treats her like a million dollars. So Ting tells Zing that her boss is a pervert who just wants to use her, just because he's jealous. Hearing this, Zing starts to overthink. Moments later, Y walks by and Secretary Sun tells her that she must follow him, so she does. But he enters the lab, so she needs to know the security code, so she tries to guess it as there are blind spots on the cameras. Moments later, Zhu looks at her and is suspicious of her, so he approaches her to ask who she is, to which Zing responds responds by pinning him to the floor, until she realizes that Zhu is the project manager and apologizes to him. She introduces herself as Y's personal assistant. Upon seeing her, Zhu notices that her physical appearance is just as Y described his type of woman. So Zhu shows her the drawing he made based on his tastes, which is a gorilla. This makes Zing angry and hits him. Later, they meet Y and Zing tells him that Secretary Sun told her to follow him, but Y tells her that this is no place for her and asks her to leave, to which Zhu whispers that she may be key to the investigation of the explosion event. So Y discusses the situation with Zing. Several days ago, a device exploded, injuring Y's father and leaving him in hospital, but this was no accident, it was premeditated. The security camera showed someone sneaking into the lab, to which Zing asks if the company's key data is at risk. But Y replies that no, since all that data is stored in the cloud, what the perpetrator stole was a biological model, but what is that? Well, animals they experiment on, like this little mouse, which Zing holds as if it were nothing because she is not afraid of them and used to eat them when she worked in special forces. But Y warns her to let the animal go, as it is a test subject exported from abroad and worth $50,000 so Zing ends up giving the mouse back slowly. Zing is taken to where the explosion occurred. There are remains of lithium-ion battery. Zing mentions that the suspect must have disguised himself as a lab worker to infiltrate. Forging a fingerprint, the suspect entered the room to take the biological model and was preparing to leave. And that's when Y's father came to supervise. The suspect needed a distraction to escape, so he took out an ion battery he was carrying and heated it with a device from the lab. Then added a lot of aluminium hydroxide powder to increase the power, so when the battery heated up, it led to the explosion. 
The security cameras were almost completely destroyed. Only a fragment of the suspect was left. Zing looks at it and manages to identify all the qualities of the suspect. And with Wise help, they manage to calculate the height of the individual. Finally, Zing zooms in on the subject's ear, since with the shape of the ear cartilage, they can identify someone, something like a fingerprint. Zhu speculates that the suspect went after the biological model because he is known to Wai's father and works in the same field. Zhu mentions that there is a business dinner in a couple of weeks, so he suggests to Wai to take Zing with him, so they can both find the culprit, but Wai says that he is the boss and decides who to take, so he doesn't seem to have any intention of taking Zing despite Zhu's insistence. Now we go to the secretary's son, who wants to buy a cake, but Ting shows up and wants to take the cake. In the end, Ting pays first and ends up taking the cake, then tells son that actions speak louder than words and leaves. Ting goes to Runchi's offices, as he wants to give that cake to Zing, but he cannot go inside unless he is part of the staff. Moments later, Sun notices that the person who took the cake from her is there, and seeing that he is known to Zing, she approaches him to ask him why he is looking for her, as she claims to be very close to Zing. Sun asks him to tell the truth and so she will decide to take the food to Zing, but Ting thinks she wants to eat the cake. So he calls Zing to let her know he has brought her some, she replies that she has already eaten, so he can leave the food at reception to pick it up later. Sun takes the phone from Ting to tell Zing that she will bring her the food without any problems, so Ting has no choice but to accept. Moments later, Sun sits down with Zing and hands her the food, then asks Zing if she has any kind of relationship with Ting. She replies that she sees him as a younger brother. Sun acknowledges that Ting is very handsome, and is more excited when she sees the food he prepared for Zing. It is a dish worthy of a chef, however, Zing has already eaten, so she will leave it for later, but realizing that Sun has not eaten, she leaves the food for Sun. Moments later, a girl mentions that Y posted a status saying that they will find the suspect soon, they don't understand what's going on, so they think it's a hidden girlfriend, so they ask Zing if she is the closest to him. Y shows up to scold both of them and tell them to do their work, then asks Sun to accompany him, so she has no choice but to eat later. Y tells Sun to increase the work of the two girls from before, as all they do is gossip. Sun suggests to Y that he should bring Zing for the upcoming dinner, but Y refuses, as he is sure that Zing is a spy for his father. Come on dude, just admit that you like her and that's it. 